Chapter 2, Luke 2, 1. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Serenius was governor of Syria, and all went to be taxed, everyone to his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Jerusalem, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary his spouse wife, being great with child, and so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over the flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you, you shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even to Bethlehem and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned with glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told in them. Let's pray. Father, come to you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful, precious story. This truth that stood the test of time, criticisms, atheisms, that stood against the wiles of the devil and comes out of the pile on top every time. I thank you, Father, for the word of an almighty God, inalterable, unchangeable, stands with all against all the attacks of the enemy. I thank you, Father, today for this wonderful Savior, this precious Christmas season, the gift unspeakable. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to talk to you a bit today about that silent and holy night. The little town of Bethlehem must have been crowded because there wasn't any room for them in the end. But it shouldn't have been in the room, actually, because old Caesar had made a proclamation that everybody should be taxed. And he said, everybody go to their own city that you were just born, your nativity, and pay your taxes. That's how God got Mary and Joseph to leave Nazareth and go to Bethlehem. He made a monkey out of Caesar, so he did. Caesar passed the rules, said everybody go to your hometown. Mary and Joseph went to their hometown, that's Bethlehem. That's where baby Jesus would be born. It prophesied in the book of Micah, a thousand years year before, that that's where he's going to be born. Prophesied back there in Isaiah. And so God used a heathen king to get his will done. God makes a monkey out of devil just about any time he wants to. And so Bethlehem was small, but it was crowded. There wasn't no room in the inn, so it went down to a, a, a manger, down to a, a lean-to, so to say, maybe even a cave where it was, where they kept sheep and animals uh, uh, and fed them and took care of them. And there's where baby Jesus was born. Jesus' birth changed things, changed the whole world. It went from B.C. before Christ to A.D. Anno Domini. This is 2021 A.D. Anno Domini, the year of our Lord. We set our calendar by the birth of Jesus. And atheists can't even pay his bills without pulling out a piece of paper and got a date on it and proving Jesus Christ was born. Fools can't even be fools without making beer fools out of self by denying that the very date that they live in. And so we notice concerning this thing, he was born, he changed the whole world, and he, he bring, brought the past into e the eternity future. And uh, there's such a great thing happened that shepherds left their sheep and came to the manger. Such a great happening that wise men left a long time earlier. They had to leave a long time earlier to get there on that night. It just so happened miraculously that that night, God said it was going to happen, 
and it took place just like he said. Shepherds over here, wise men way over yonder, but they all met in Jesus Christ. No matter how far away you are, how close you are, it's Jesus, 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 if you're going to heaven. That's the only way about it. Number one, I'll show you about this thing, that God's plan, God's power, and God's promise all came to pass. And then God's getting ready to send his choir from heaven to come sing on earth. And the word praise that says that angels praising God and saying, the word praise there includes singing. In the book of Psalms, the word praise is all through it. And you cannot praise God without singing. You can't sing about God without it being praised. And so God uh, wants us to praise him in song. Let everything hath rest, praise the Lord. These angels came, and they was praising God on the highest. The first thing I want to talk to you about is a mannerly virgin. She was a virgin. A mannerly virgin. She had good manners, good morals. She was a, a, a woman that loved God and served God. It was a ma handmaiden of the Lord. She was a handmaiden of the Lord. Sometimes I call somebody a uh, handmaiden of the Lord. That's a compliment if you ever got one. If I call you one, I might maybe make a mistake. But when God calls you a handmaid, then you are somebody special. And Mary was a handmaiden of the Lord. The angel said, Blessed art thou, Mary. You're highly favored. Your God's with you. That thing's going to happen to you is by the Holy Ghost. But Mary's life. In Luke chapter 1, verse 27, 28, you find out she was highly favored. And she, and she was blessed among women. And this woman, Mary, was a special woman. She was not like most women. She was, never had been passed around or handled or abused or used. She was clean all the way up to the very day yeah. that Jesus Christ was born. Amen. And even after he was born, she was still a virgin until her and Joseph had their first son, their first daughter. They had four sons and at least two daughters. The son's name was James, Joseph, and Judah, and, and, and Simon. And the girls aren't named, but she had at least two sisters. Jesus had at least two sisters by Mary and Joseph. Hey, brother, hey, sister, you please. But Jesus was a, a virgin born son of God. And Mary was special. She was a manly virgin. Her life was wonderful. Her language. Here's what she said to the angel. I know not a man. She was plain. She told the truth. I am a virgin. How can I have a baby? She didn't say it in those words, but that's why I would have said it. I said, man, you got something wrong with you. You might be an angel, but you don't have no sense. You don't know what you're talking about. She was talking biology. The angels talking theology. That which is born in you is of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> she called the Son of the High. His name should be called Emmanuel. She name is Jesus and saves people from their sins. Her language was, tell me the truth about this thing. Tell me how it's going to be. I want to know what you're talking about. Sometimes when a preacher's preaching, you want to say, I wonder what he's talking about. Put it on the side maybe I'll explain it to you a little bit. Don't ever live in darkness. She said, I don't understand what you're talking about. I don't understand what you're saying. Tell me more. Tell me something. I just don't understand. Let me know. How can this be? And then he pointed her toward God and said, That which is in you is of God. It's God's will. It's God's son. It's God's baby. You're a virgin and using you to fulfill a prophecy in Isaiah 7, 14. She knew the prophecy. Israelites could not be able to pass up that prophecy because every generation looked for him. Every generation looked for him. And when the woman had a baby and she, and she that first baby she'd ever had, she was a virgin when she got married and so forth, she'd run that baby to the temple and let them, let them examine him. And old said, no, this ain't him. And finally here comes Jesus. Ah, that's him. Amen. He lifted him up toward heaven and said, now let thy servant depart in peace for I've seen thy salvation. Jesus was that son of the almighty God, incarnate God in a body like in a man's sinful flesh. Mary provided him a body, and God was inside her. He was the fullness of Godhead bodily. Bodily. So no, no, her language, her lineage. She was of a priestly lineage. She was of a, the priestly family. Her cousin, Elizabeth, was married to Zacharias, they was priestly family. And so she was coming from the priestly line. Joseph was in line for the, for the throne through Judah. Uh, uh, he was uh, uh, in line for the, for the kingship. So there was the kingship and the priesthood all united in Jesus Christ. And when the wise men came to the gold, gold and frankincense and myrrh, 
gold for a king, frankincense for a priest, myrrh for a prophet. What a wonderful situation it was when they came around that little old manger. The night he was born, God said, that's him. You don't look for nothing else, don't look for nobody else, that's him right there. And so the angels bore witness. Her, she was a virgin, her life, her language, her lineage, but her love. <laughs> Mary loved baby Jesus. She loved him all of his life. And whenever we went to Cana Galilee, she said to him, said, whatever he says, they do it. We need wine for the supper. We're out of wine. She said, whatever Jesus says, that's what you do. He said, bring me six firkins of, pot, of pots of water. And he filled them up with water and turned that water into wine. And the Lord of the Christ, he said, most men save the best wine to last. But you've given us the best wine. I'll tell you what, the, the old rotten wine, they used to give it after everybody got drunk. But that kind of wine Jesus gave didn't make them drunk. It's fruit of the vine, hallelujah. That's what the Bible says. And so he, the merit, she said, do what he tells you. And whenever he's on the cross, Jesus said to, the one, to his mother, he said, behold uh, thy son. I kind of thought maybe he was talking about himself, but he wasn't. He was talking about John. And he told John, he said, behold thy mother. And from that day forward, John took Mary home with him and took care of her until she died. Wouldn't it be more of a, if we could find somebody to trust our widow with today? Jesus would not give up the ghost. He would not die. He would not quit until he put his mother in safe hands. And oh, John, my soul, what a man John was. But she loved him, and she watched him die. She wept as he died. And in the upper room, when they had the 120 praying to the Holy Ghost fell upon, Mary was in that crowd. Still loving her son, serving her son, and his brothers was with her, and the sisters was with her. Jesus, oh, they loved him. So Mary loved him. And we'll see number two about this thing, the magnificent visit. Here's what I want to hang on to a while. Not only was the a mannerly virgin, but a magnificent visit. We hear about these angels coming. Their appearance. The heavens lit up. And the glory of God shone around. And the glory was so great that they were sore afraid. I, I've been scared to death, I thought, but they were sore afraid. Sore afraid. When I had this thing printed up last year for the, for the uh, uh, news thing to go out to, for everybody's company, the, the lady called me on the phone. She said, what's this word, sore afraid? Is that right? Is that a mistake? I said, no, ma'am, that's not a mistake. That wasn't a mistake. And last year they made 13 mistakes in our newsletter going out about Christmas. I, I went this time, I wrote, I said, here, here, here. Thirteen times you messed up. Well, we co copied just like you sent it. I said, no, he didn't, because I put it under, under the copy machine and said, <laughs> and so people make mistakes, but God don't. Amen. One time at Eddie's print shop over here on Oklahoma, I sent the thing in our friend's print, and he said, Jesus gave his life a ransom for many. He, he's a Catholic, and he messed up and said, ransom for money. And I said, Ernie, son, you got to... Well, nobody knows that. I said, I did. <laughs> if God keeps his word perfect for thousands of years, we messed up one night, something wrong. Yeah. So he had to print the whole thing over at his own expense. Back then, it wasn't about 150 people on the mail list, but still, you can't say Jesus, Jesus died for the ransom of money. No. But Mary is a magnificent appearance, mighty, and fearful. So it's a great appearance of the heavenly choir, the heavenly angels, the whole mass of them. The sky lit up so tremendous that everybody from afar knew something going on. It, everybody knew something was happening. God had visited planet Earth. And so the angels' appearance was great and mighty, but the angels' advice, first thing they said was fear not. If you ever see an angel, you'll get scared. They're not little naked hindies with wings and little bow and arrows. They're mighty angels. Amen. And one day you and I are going to walk down through the glorious and they're going to stand back in attention with their swords folded and their shields folded and you and I are going to go marching through. Yes. Amen. But if you saw an angel, when somebody says, oh, she had long blonde hair, you didn't see no angel. You saw a movie star. Angels are mighty men and they're none of them women. They're sexist, but they're called men. Amen? You wake up, show me different. I apologize publicly. And nobody's an angel. It says we'll be like angels. 
We'll be equal to angels. We'll be as angels, but never says we'll be angels. Amen. Show it to me, amen. But these angels were glorious creatures, created beings that God made to bring Him glory and honor and minister to us. Angels are ministering spirits. You might feel the presence of them, and you might actually maybe get a glimpse of something, and you might think it's an angel, but if you ever get in present one and see Him, you'll know that He's sexless. And he's powerful. Angels. But when they saw these angels, they were sore afraid. Not somewhat afraid. Not a little bit afraid. They're scared to death. And so their advice was, fear not. If you ever see an angel, the first thing he's going to tell you is, fear not. On the judgment, my friend, they'll cast you in the lake of fire, says the Bible. But if you see one here, or you get it in the presence of one here, you'll know he's there for your good. Because now's the time when they're ministering spirits, not judgment spirits. The announcement, verse 11 and 12, the message of the angels, they said a sign. You'll see a sign. Go down to Bethlehem, and the sign is, you'll see a babe blind in a manger, the fulfillment of Isaiah seven fourteen, And it's God incarnate, in a body. It's God with us. It's Emmanuel. It's Jesus. Take away his sins. And these angels told them shepherds, Mary, Joseph, and the wise men all together, told them this is the Christ child. This is the sign that God has said he had sinned, and here it is. You don't have to look for another. Remember old John? Is this the Christ, or should you look for another? And when they got done seeing what Jesus did, they went and told John, that's him, that's him, that's him. Amen. Don't look for another Christ. There'll never be another. So the announcement. Something that was new and never old. Jesus was a new thing. Remember over there in the Old Testament where God said, I'm going I'm to I'm do a new thing. A man shall come. A woman shall come past a man. That new thing was Jesus inside the virgin womb of Mary. And the shepherds said, let's go see this thing that the angels have made known unto us. And when they got there, they saw the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. The sign that God gave Ahab way back yonder when he refused to give God a challenge. And God said, well, if you won't ask a sign, I'll give you one. A virgin is going to have a baby. And it happened just like God said. What a sign that was. You say, a woman, the woman, many women, but a virgin having a baby? Impossible? With God, all things are possible. Amen. And that virgin-born Son of God is God incarnate. So, something new and never old. Not only the appearance and the advice and the announcement, look at the action. Then a multitude of the heavenly host. The next time you see this multitude is over in the book of Revelation, where it says that all the angels... Fall before the throne. Can you imagine fluff as far as you can see? Angels fall. All the angels fall before the throne. I'm looking forward to seeing that great multitude of angels one day after a while. While Bethlehem slept, God didn't. While many didn't hear, others listened. While some weren't looking, others saw something. While the world lay in darkness, some saw a great light. While some were speechless, others shouted for joy. While some were, many were nervous, others were calm and peaceful. When Jesus came to planet earth, Herod, the Bible said, got angry. He was wrathful. What did he do? Killed all the babies in Ephrata from two years and under. What did wise men do? They went home a different way to keep them going by Herod. What did she ever do? They went and told everybody they saw. You just got to do something about it. When that baby's born, you get mad or you get glad. You get wrathful and upset or you get peaceful. He said peace and goodwill toward all men. These shepherds had peace and joy and Herod went nuts. Herod was a lunatic, had 
one of his wives killed, had two of his sons killed, had, had another, another wife killed, and, and, and had babies slaughtered. And he was just a wild, crazy maniac. And, and he did me at maniac. That's what he was. But while some were all tore up about it, others were calm and peaceful. The birth of Jesus Christ will either make you calm and peaceful or an agnostic. An agnostic means someone who don't know nothing about something. You might be a scientist, be an agnostic when it comes to God. You might be a theologian, be agnostic when it comes to God. You might be the richest man on earth and have a, an old library and still be an agnostic, in other words, not knowing something about Jesus. This man, Herod, was a crazy man. While some found sin, some found the sign. Many played the sin scene and run after the women and so forth, and others heard angels sing. It's all according to how you take the birth. You can be miserable or happy. Be agnostic or joyful. You can sing with the angel choir. You can cuss with the barroom crowd. But Jesus came any way, no matter how you take it. He came and you must take it the right way or go to hell. A magnificent visit. Magnificent voice. Ministry of the angels. They came to minister. The moment of the angels. <laughs> the Bible said in the very beginning, in the book of Job, it said when God created heavens and earth, the sons of God shouted for joy, and the morning stars sang together. And here, when Jesus was born, they had another stanza. Now watch, I'm going to say something kind of stupid, but you'll, you'll get the point. I can see... Gabriel, he gets up, gets up in front of all that crowd, all them angels, alto, soprano, bass, lead, get ready, one, two, three, let's go, Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer. No! No! It wasn't a bunch of foolishness. It was a song of the birth of the Son of the living God with power and demonstration of angels and fireworks. <laughs> We've turned Christmas into a bunch of foolishness. Back to this. That's just a little silly illustration. I hope you got the point. And the moment of the angels, this was the greatest moment they'd ever had. Watch this. The morning stars sang together. The sons of God shouted for joy. But look at this. Look at this. The sky filled with myriads and multitudes of angels filling the whole place, singing because a baby was born. Praising because a baby was born. Worshiping that baby. Angels worshiped a baby. <laughs> The message of the angels, he's the Savior, he's the Christ, he's the Lord, he's the King. The multitude of the angels. In Revelation, we see the same multitude again that no man can number, that they're just forever back through yonder. And they're all worshiping the King. Jesus called the King of angels. He's called that in the Bible. The king of angels. The angels worship him. And if you want to be in the presence of angels one day after a while, you better worship what they worship. Amen. You better worship who they worship. You better uh, be underneath who they minister for. They're the ministers of God. And they're ministering to you and I. I love angels. I ain't never seen none. But I think I've been in the presence of them. I sure do that. I've never seen one. I've heard people talk about seeing angels. I wish I could, I, but I haven't. I have, to, I have to confess, I haven't seen one. The last point is this. Not only the mannerly virgin, the magnificent visit, but the marvelous victory. Jesus coming to planet Earth is a victory for you, a victory for me, 
and victory for everybody that will call on his name. Lord and Savior. You see, Savior was discovered as Jesus. I can see the shepherds coming and beholding the baby. It's just another baby. Caddies have a little white circle around the top of his head, but that ain't the Bible. <laughs> he got a circle around the whole earth. But they came into his presence and they knew they was in the presence of somebody special. They fell down and they worshipped him. They adored him. And when they got up, they went everywhere telling everybody they came in contact with what they had seen and what they had heard and what had been revealed unto them by the angels. We've got a story to tell. Amen. We can start off in a manger and take him to the cross and go all the way to the throne in glory. An old story, never ended story, and yet a new thing that the world has never seen one like it and never seen nothing like it. This wonderful story of Jesus. The Savior was discovered. Can you see those wise men bringing those gifts? Not, they weren't cheap dime store junk. They had the best they had. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. You could buy slaves with gold. You could buy land with gold. You could buy land with frankincense. You could buy it with myrrh. Remember poor old uh, Mary, when she anointed Jesus' feet with spikenard? That was her life savings. Well, she was blessed enough to give her life savings twice in one lifetime. <laughs> and on Calvary's hill, the stench of death, bones, and bloody bodies and pieces of people laying around on that hill. The stench of sweat and blood and death. The smoke and torment of Gehenna from the valley coming up. But all of a sudden, ah, something sweet in the air. The stench of death. But all of a sudden, something smells good. It was the spikener from Jesus' feet. And the spikener from Mary's hair. It was only six days ago she'd done it. Six days from the time she washed his feet with tears and wiped the fire of her head and anointed him. On the sixth day, they crucified him. She, he still had the smell of spikenard, and she did too. She wanted to be identified with him. She wanted her hair to smell like his feet, and she wanted his feet to smell like her hair. Spikenard. Myrrh, Alice, cumin, all those pre precious. They were precious. They were hauled from a long way. They were valuable. And yet, they weren't wasted on him. You give God your best, you ain't wasted nothing. Amen. Give God your life savings, you ain't wasted nothing. It'll come back to you on the water, bread on the water. More you can handle. Savior was discovered. Satan was defeated. I like the idea that the devil got beat up bad that night by a baby. <laughs> he attacked Adam and Eve and whooped them. He attacked Cain and Abel and whooped them. He attacked Abraham and Sarah and whooped them. He attacked Jacob and Esau and whooped them. He attacked everybody that's ever been born and whooped them until that little old baby come along. Yeah. And he couldn't do a thing with him. Yeah. <laughs> if you have Jesus in you, you have the hope of glory. Yeah. If you have Christ in you, you have a power that conquers all evil. Yeah. And we are more than conquerors through Christ who strengthens yeah. us. We do all thanks to Christ who strengthens us. I'm telling you, the Savior was discovered. Satan was defeated. Even Moses and Aaron and Miriam fell to him. Moses smoked the rock. Miriam rebelled against Moses. And Aaron built a golden calf. We've all messed up. But that and in that manger, he gives us hope that Satan has been defeated. Shout out. 
Saints were delighted. The Holy Ghost filled Zachariah. The Holy Ghost filled Elizabeth. The Holy Ghost filled Mary. The Holy Ghost filled Simeon. The Holy Ghost filled Anna. I'm telling you, anybody got in contact with Jesus got filled with the Holy Ghost. The saints delight. The devil's defeat. Last of all, my friend, the sinners are delivered. Untold multitudes have been saved from sin, death, hell, and the grave because of that little old baby in that manger. They just got done killing about 2,000 of them. Why not that one? Because God told Joseph, take him to Egypt. And after two years in Egypt, somebody said, where in the world did they get the money to live two years down there in Egypt? Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. The wise men, they, they financed the first missionary trip, amen. God just makes a monkey out of the devil anytime he wants to. But what I'm trying to tell you is this. God had a special, special day and night. And when they got back, got done from Egypt, they came back after Herod died, and the Bible said God fulfilled the prophecy, saying, Out of Egypt have I called my son. Everything they did fell right in God's lap as a prophecy and a sign fulfilled. God had it all planned out, and they couldn't do anything but fulfill his plans. Well, Multitudes. The Bible said in the book of Revelation, because Jesus came and died in that little, uh, born in that little man, died on that cross, because Jesus came, the Bible said to people from every tongue, every nation, every kindred, and every people, shouting with the same language in glory. Amen. Praising and adoring the majesty of the eternal one, who saw fit to step over the banisters of heaven, come down the stairway of the that ladder, the old Jacob seen yonder, angels asked in descent, came down there to earth in the form of a baby, whooped everything going and coming, and went back to glory. And he's going to come back and get those who believe in him. That little old baby. Christmas is a good, good, good time to talk about, about salvation. Behold, a Savior is born in the city of David, which is called Bethlehem. The shepherds went and found him. The wise men went and found him. If you go, you'll find him. Let's stand.